Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now you've probably noticed those expensive Nvidia Tesla graphics cards floating around on the market. Now what's common about these GPUs is that they don't usually have any display outputs because they were intended or are intended for workstation use. They're designed to go inside powerful computers, do advanced calculations, things like that. Engineers use them, people who need a supercomputer for whatever reason use them. They're very expensive and to be honest there's no reason why most of you watching would really need one in a gaming rig. Now I mentioned that with Nvidia Tesla cards there aren't any display outputs because you don't need to connect them to a monitor. That being said, a couple were made with DVI ports and I have one of them right here. This is the NVIDIA Tesla C2075. Is that true? Yes, it is, the C2075. And unlike other Tesla cards, it has a DVI port. We've also got a pretty unique power pin set up here. I mean, you've got the eight pin connector at the back and the six pin connector at the side there. And what's interesting about this card is that you can either power it with two six pin connectors, connecting one there and one there, or you can power it with one eight pin connector using just that one there if your power supply is good enough. Today I thought I'd test this out with some games and uh, this is something that a card like this really isn't designed for. It's a workstation GPU. Like I said they don't usually have display outputs on them. This one does but yeah there's only one way I can really describe my gaming experience with this beast and well it's best left demonstrated so this is what it's like trying to game with a, a tesla gpu of this age Now the reason the experience is so bad is because these cards were never designed for gaming purposes and installing the Tesla drivers on Windows 10 means that when it comes to running your latest and greatest games collection the experience is going to be a pretty stuttery one because the card is really trying its best but the power just isn't going to the right places to put it very very simply. So the closest common equivalent I can think of that the C2075 compares to in terms of a regular GeForce card would be a GTX 580 but of course they can't be compared directly because they are both intended for totally different things and that is why this is so slow. I also want to discuss the actual setting up process of this card before we try again under Windows 7 because I have a feeling that Windows 10 was hindering the performance a little bit. So the C2075 here um, under Windows 10 will not install the latest drivers. If you select the latest drivers from the NVIDIA webpage which I'll throw up on screen here you will get an installation error or at least I did. This obviously isn't ideal and you won't be able to install the graphical drivers aside from the very basic ones that will install through the Windows update. So what I did was uh, actually reverted to a slightly older version of the graphics card drivers that I found online and these were the ones that I used. I thought the low frame rates might be contributed to this at first and then I thought maybe it's because I'm hooking it up with one 8 pin connector instead of the two 6 pin connectors so I tried both methods and unfortunately it was a bit of a disaster yet again. The frame rate really wasn't any different. What I did then instead was throw together an older Core i series based rig with an old first gen i7 and then I installed Windows 7 on it to see if this would actually make any difference and well let's get into those results now. So I actually ended up using an AMD A63650 motherboard bundle with the Tesla instead. You saw this probably in the last video and the reason for that is because this was already set up and I couldn't find a cooler for the i7 bundle so I went with this system instead. Now there's no need to worry about any potential bottlenecks, things like that because as you'll see it's actually the GPU which uh, is the problem once again in Windows 7. We got the same error 
with the graphics installation here, which was sort of to be expected, but I wanted to rule out all possibilities. So basically what I did then was test every driver available on the NVIDIA site for the Tesla under Windows 7. And although this one did work, 386.45 here, and all of them pretty much installed apart from the latest one, well, I'm afraid to say it made no real difference when it came to the gaming results. But all of this was sort of to be expected from the start. This is a workstation GPU. After all, it just had a DVI port and I wondered what would happen. That being said, older games will probably run fine. I mean, GTA San Andreas here looks a bit choppy, but uh, it actually ran with 30 FPS on average, so this is the sort of game you can expect to play, but I really wouldn't buy one of these, and something that requires what is seemingly rather a lot of effort to set up for purposes it's not designed for seems like a bit of a pointless endeavour. You know, if something's more difficult in terms of a graphics card than just sticking it in the system and installing the drivers, it's really not worth it when you could just buy a card that's supposed to be for gaming. But of course, this was for a bit of fun and it's always interesting to check out these cards. Thank you for watching then. Um, a Tesla, I almost said GeForce GTX, then a Tesla graphics card. Well, it really isn't worth it. I paid £31 for this, which I believe is the equivalent to 40 US dollars. I was the only bidder on eBay for this card and I like it. I think it's a pretty decent card to have as part of one's collection. <laughs> that sounded awfully posh, but uh, yeah, it really isn't good for much else unless you do plan on putting together a budget workstation or something like that. All you gamers out there though, well, it's best to steer clear of this and just opt for a GTX 580 or something like that instead if you want to go for something older. And of course, don't mind reduced frame rates in games anyway, because even that card isn't going to do all that well in modern titles. I still do find this very interesting in that it's one of the only Teslas out Aside from a couple of others in the C series lineup, the C2050 and the C2072 that have DVI connectors, there might be some other Tesla cards out there, but these ones are pretty cheap to get hold of if you find yourself bidding for one. And uh, yeah, well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I was hoping it would do better, but things don't always work out the way you plan. On a quick side note, I can't help but feel like I've missed something. You know, if I've uh, done something wrong here, the installation is incomplete for whatever reason, let me know because I'd love to retest this if that turns out to be the case. You know, if I am wrong about this, I'll happily admit that I missed something out. But yeah, I think it's just because it's not intended for gaming that it performs so badly. And that's all I can really put it down to. But let me know if you have one of these or have ever tried one of, one of these for gaming and have got better results because I'd like to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.